In this tutorial, we're going to cover the Q checkbox widget inside PyQt6. The Q checkbox widget is used to create check buttons or check boxes, as they're often known. All right. So, what is a checkbox or a check button? Basically, it's a simple button or a simple box that you can select, that you can tick. Basically, for example, you may have seen that three or four options are presented to you, and you can select a zero, one, or more than one option. And every time you select one of them, they kind of become ticked or colored, right? Fully colored, like in black or something. That's basically what a check button is. Okay, and this is in contrast to its counterpart, the radio button, where you can only select one option out of many. Okay, so let's get started. I'll first create a simple check button here. Let's just call it check, check one. Okay, and I'll create it using the Q checkbox class from the QT widgets module. Okay, and the first parameter here is going to be the label. Okay, because the actual checkbox is just a box but there needs to be some kind of descriptive label next to it that defines what it is. So let's just go with something generic like option one. Okay, and I'm gonna create a layout over here. Okay, because I'm gonna be creating more than just one check button. So I want to have a proper layout over here. So I'm gonna import the VBox layout. Okay, now VBox layout, VBox is equal to uh, Q VBox layout. Okay, self.set layout, set the layout to our window. Okay, and now I can begin adding our widgets into our layout using add widget. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to duplicate this, okay, a bunch of times, three times, all right, three check buttons. And I'm just going to change the names here. Okay, so we now have three, all right, just remember to change it everywhere. Otherwise, there'll be problems. Okay, and we're good. Let's run this code and let's see our output. Okay, so here's our uh, three check buttons. And because we're using a layout, they're all nicely you know, ordered vertically because we're using V box layout, vertical box layout. Okay, so I can select them. Okay, select this one, select this one. And these three are now selected. Pretty cool. So I can deselect them as well. Okay. That's how check buttons work. Okay, so this is the very basic implementation. Let's take a look at what we can do with them. What, how can we interact with these? All right. So one cool thing I want to show you first, though, when it comes to grouping, is the Q group box layout. This is pretty cool, and I, I just thought I'd share it with you before we move on to the, you know, interactions. I'm going to create a group box widget here, and as the name suggests, it's used for grouping. Okay, and it actually works very well when it comes to radio buttons and check buttons, which is why I'm mentioning it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new layout actually. I'll just call this main layout, all right, and make it a VBox layout as well, Q VBox layout. Okay, and I'm going to just make a few changes here. I don't want this layout to be, uh, hold on, let me just explain this after I'm done, all right making too many changes here right now. Okay. The main layout is now our layout for the window. Okay. Okay. What, what am I doing? It's self.set layout and I pass in main layout in here. Okay. And what I'm going to do here. Okay. Is just watch VBox or actually group dot set layout vbox okay and main layout dot add widget group okay so let me explain what happened here first i made a main layout okay and the reason i made this is so that if i want in the future i can add in multiple group boxes in here okay i can add in multiple layouts in here so it's good to have one main layout and then all the other sub layouts in there okay it's just good practice then i made a group box widget Okay, and I added it to the main layout. Okay, then I made a layout that I want to include within the group box. Okay, because the group box itself doesn't really, you know, handle the arrangement of widgets. It just provides some extra extra functionality that I'll show you right now. Uh, so if you want to actually have the widgets showing up 
in a good format, you know, showing up vertically and not being squeezed together, you need to use a layout. Otherwise, technically, I could just remove this and insert these three widgets inside the group box. But I won't do that because that won't look good. So I have this layout within the, within the group box and these three widgets within the layout, okay? So if I run this code now, here is our group box, okay? You can't really see it very well. That's because I haven't added in the label yet. So I can, I can just give this a label like uh, a group of checkboxes, okay? And now that's our group box over there, okay? And there's a, this nice little border around it as well that you can customize. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the group box video, widget video, okay? Uh, but here you can see the benefit. But even still, there's something even more cooler that you can do. Group box dot set checkable, okay? And I'll pass true in here. Now what this does is it adds this nice little check button over here, okay? And if I deselect this, this all turns false. Okay, so this is a good way of grouping together radio, uh, sorry, actually both, you can use this for both radio buttons and check buttons. So this is a good way of grouping them and managing them. All right, so let's take a look at some actual functionality, some actual interaction that we can create between us and the check boxes. Okay, so what I'll do is create this function called print details. Okay, this will print the details for the check boxes because we need to know which check box did the user select. Okay, what did he press? What's currently happening? Okay, we need to find out these details. And how will we do that? Let me show you. One approach that we can take here is that we use the uh, toggled, okay? We use the toggled signal, okay? What signals are basically is that they signal events, okay? So for example, if I click on the check button, that's a toggle event, okay? And that generates the signal toggled and I can connect the signal to a function like print details. Now, whenever I click on the check button, that's going to trigger the signal that's going to trigger this function. Okay. And if I do the same for the other two widgets, let me show you what kind of effect we can really create. Okay. All right. Hold it. Okay. So just do that over here. Check button three dot toggled. Great. Now what I'm going to do here is print self dot sender. Okay. And this returns the object. This returns the widget that triggered this function. Okay. And I can, I can do text. What this does is prints out the text of the object that triggered this function. Okay. So this function doesn't only work for the check buttons. It can work for anything really that triggers it. So if I run this code now, and if I select option one, it's going to print out option one. If I select option two, it'll print out option two. If I select option three, it'll select option three. And that's because I'm clicking on them because I'm toggling them. So if I also disable them, it's also gonna work. Okay, I wonder, does this work? No, okay. So enabling and disabling this has no effect. Okay, so yeah, all right, cool. Now, but I can tell which option is being selected, but how do I know its current value? Is it being toggled on or is it being toggled off? I don't know that, but I can find out. So I can do self dot sender uh, dot is checked. Okay. And what this is going to do is print out the Boolean value. Is it being turned on or off? Okay. So you can see here clearly that when it's turning on is true. When it's turning off is false. Okay. All right. So there's one more concept I want to leave you guys with. So I'm going to go over this real quick, All right? From PYQD6 dot qt core import qt okay and okay that worked now what i want to do here is check three dot set check state because i haven't shown you guys how to actually set the state yet now what you could do is uh set toggled or is it set state i uh, can't remember set checked Okay. Yeah. Checked. You can do this. You can do this to automatically pick which state is on and which state is off. Okay. From the start, or you can change it through code. Like if you press a button and then one of them turns on or something, maybe, I don't know. It depends on what you're trying to do, but the concept I'm trying to give you here is of the third state. There's actually three states that you can trigger inside, uh, you know, check boxes. So let me just talk about that real quick. Basically it's this, 
it's this uh, over here, this function, this takes a state, okay, a check state object. Okay, so qt dot check state. Now there are different types of check states like checked, partially checked and unchecked. Now normally we just deal with unchecked and checked. Okay, checked means obviously it's selected, unchecked means it's not. Partially selected is a third state. Okay, so if I run this code, you'll see that this is actually partially selected. Okay, and it looks like the, the try state activated. Okay, try state is basically, uh, hold on, is there a function for that? Set try state, yeah. Okay, so the try state, uh, try state, when you pass true into the set try state function, what it does is it enables uh, three states. I assume that the reason it triggered over here was because this function automatically enabled it. So if I just uh, do this for all three, now you'll notice that I can set, I can select the third state in all of them. Okay, so this is just a concept I wanted to leave you with. All right, it's useful and may come in handy if it's something you want to do. All right, other than this, there's not really much. If you want to find out exactly who it was, by the way, just one more slight tip I'll leave you guys leave you guys with. You can do, for example, self dot check one over here, and I need to reflect that everywhere else now. That's annoying. Uh, self and self over there. What you can do is actually compare. You can compare self dot check one, all right? You can actually compare it like this, okay? This is check button one. So if I run this now, and if I uh, select option one, it'll print out this is check button one, but it won't do that for any other uh, check button. One more important thing to keep in mind is that whenever you uh, implement try state, you need to actually change the signal you're using. Don't use toggled anymore, because for example, watch, I'll click on option two and it triggers option two, true, okay. But if I click on it again, okay, first of all, true doesn't tell us whether it's actually selected or whether it's partially selected because toggled is actually something that just has two states. Untoggled, actually toggled, uh, yeah, basically it just has two states, okay. It works just fine for radio buttons, but not for check boxes once you activate three states, okay. So if I click on option two again, it's not gonna print out anything. This is a problem. So you actually need to change this from toggled to the actual state that's used, sorry, to the actual signal that we normally use. It's called state changed, okay? So I'll just reflect these changes everywhere else, okay? And now you won't notice this problem anywhere else, okay? So state changed, all right? So if I click on option two now, it'll print out option two true, yeah. It'll print out option two true as well, but that's still not perfect, okay? It's printing out when we need it to, but it's not printing out the right thing. So if I do self.sender dot check state, okay, this will give us the current state. So if I click on option two, it'll give us partially checked. Okay, if I click on, on it again, it'll give us checked. If I click it again, it'll give us unchecked. So this is correct. Okay, and by the way, these are constants. They stand for zero, one, and two. So you can you know, use them as integers as well, if I remember correctly. So let's end the video right here. I think we've covered quite enough. I hope this video was worth your time. If you like this content and wanna see more in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys in a later video. Bye then.